Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Hartford Small Biz Ahead podcast. My name is Gene Marks, and thank you so much uh, for joining us for this episode. I've got Frank Cottle here, who is the CEO at Alliance Virtual Offices that is joining me. Frank, first of all, thank you so much for joining me. We have a lot to talk about uh, regarding remote working. So thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Absolutely. So first of all, tell us a little bit about Alliance Virtual Offices. Um, where are you located right now? Is this your company? How did you get involved? What does the company do? Give us the pitch. Well, we've actually been involved in the flexible workspace industry uh, since 1979. Uh, so we have a long history of, of uh, business centers, co-working centers, uh, uh, the technology behind that industry. Um, and uh, today, uh, the Alliance Virtual Company, uh, we service uh, well over 150,000 uh, uh, companies uh, across 54 countries. Mm. Uh, uh, so we have uh, been uh, specialists at virtual officing or remote work in many respects, uh, and uh, actually coined the name virtual office back in the early 90s. Uh, uh, we own all the trademarks to the future of work. We sort of are in the middle of the stream, right, you might say. So um, when we're talking about you know, you know, virtual offices, are we talking about actual physical space where offices are or some other type of you know, structure? Well, uh, we're talking about the combination of the two, actually. Um, when you talk about remote work, you have to think of um, the person is sitting somewhere. Right. It's just not where you thought they were going to be in a, in a centralized office environment. And what we found is that people like to work from home. They also like to work near home. And a lot of smaller companies, in particular as a growth model, have chosen to use a virtual office as a foundation to grow their companies. And they'll start off by using a physical address, but instead of just having it being a, a PO box or something, they want to have all of the clerical, secretarial, administrative support, telephony support, live receptionists, uh, uh, network and bandwidth management, everything you would have in a major corporate office accessed in on demand instead right. of aid on bulk. So we created a model that combines people, place, and technology and delivers that bundled product with a highly flexible service agreement that you can use by the day, week, month, year, multiple years, et cetera. How does that work in, uh, you know, with or dovetail in with, you know, people working from home? Like, how do you, uh, how does that work into your model? Um, let's take a sales manager. Okay. Let's assume that you're a sales manager and you're working from home. Right. Emphasis on manager. You need to meet your team. Your team is regionally, if you're a sales manager, oftentimes in proximity to you. So you need a place to meet. You might have a virtual office at a business or co-working center near the, the, the nexus of where everybody's uh, activities are and utilize that address as your address to service customers, um, but also as a physical place uh, for everybody who is working from home to meet. Because uh, working remotely doesn't necessarily just mean you're stuck at your kitchen table. It means you're working as a digital nomad, if you will, but you're not moving from country to country. In fact, we, as a digital nomad, uh, definitionally, you might think for a, a moment, um, you know, an image of me with a surfboard, a guitar, and a laptop living in Bali. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's a great image for me, by the way. <laughs> uh, you, you might also um, they think, well, wait a second. I've, I've met a lot of these people. And so we re redefined that. We said, well, there's digital slow mats. And these are people with real jobs that maybe live in Portugal for six months and then seasonally move up to Berlin and then move down somewhere else. Six months, 12 months at a time. That's a slow mat. Right. But well, what you really have, the greatest population are low mats local digital nomads. And I'll right. use yourself as an example. Yep. I don't know you, but I can guarantee you do business every once in a while from Starbucks or a coffee shop or a right. cafe. Right. Okay. You do business every once in a while from your home. Right. You do business from a corporate office. 
You do business from some other office. It could be a hotel, it could be a business center, et cetera. You're a right. local nomad that maybe has a 10 or 15 or 20 mile radius around where you're working in a variety of remote formats, not right. just one. So interesting that you say this. So I, I know you say that you don't know me, so um, which is true because we've just met as part of this conversation. But let me let me give you a little bit more context because I'm curious to hear um, how you would address my situation because it's not that different than a lot of other businesses. So I'm a CPA. Mm-hmm. I have a company that I, I don't work for the Hartford, but I do a lot of writing. And um, I have a company outside of Philadelphia. Okay, mm-hmm. And um, we are a technology services company. So we, we implement different types of softwares. I have 10 employees and about mm-hmm. a dozen contractors. Most of them are local, although a few of them are out of the area. We have been completely virtual, Frank, um, since 2005. Right, mm-hmm. So it's been a long time. Our overhead is non existent. Everybody works from their homes. We used to have offices, but nobody was coming into the office on a daily basis. And as you remember, in 2005, it was a different environment, you know, where, um, you know, it, it, remote working, like what you were doing, you were like a pioneer in this. I mean, it wasn't that, you know, that, that you know, known back then. So we would have an office and, um, you know, I was sitting in there by myself and uh, ultimately closed down the office because it was just, it wasn't worth it. So we've been working virtually. The... Uh, overhead has been great. I mean, we're, you know, now I have a post sure. office box and, you know, th- that's all fine. However, uh, Frank, I, I am pretty much running the world's most dysfunctional company. You know, like we, we, we never see each other as a group. Uh, we have very little culture. We're serving our clients, all that kind of stuff. Um, but we don't have any one space to meet. We don't have any, you know, thing to gather around. We, we you know, we're just, yeah, we we used to have Christmas parties, and I gave up on them because half the people would show up not even knowing who the other people were. You know, it was just it was just strange, and that's been like the essence of my business over the past like twenty years. Um, and I've thought about maybe I should have a virtual office. Now there are a lot of companies out there that are either virtual like mine or thinking of going like you know virtual, maybe not completely to my extent, but I'm just wondering like. How would, if I was talking to you and you were going to pitch me on, on Alliance Virtual Offices, um, I'm not sure if you guys have locations in Philly or not, which is, you know, mm-hmm. where I'm from. We do. Okay. Tell me, like, you know, pitch me why having, you know, taking advantage of your services would, would be a help to my business. Well, I, I don't want to make this sound like a company pitch. So I'm going to okay. It, okay. try and get to the high, high, high level. And we it, will. And we will. First. Nothing in its purest form is generally good. So when you say you're 100% virtual, you've always been virtual, you've always been remote, eh, that's not necessarily good. Um, You're right. You you mentioned culture. Eh, You have to have a culture. So there there are certain things in the building of a company that you want to look at. You've mentioned a couple of times, hey, our overhead is great. Uh, It is. But, you know, there's a social overhead, too. And maybe you're you have a burden there, right? So you want to think of all these things, and and what we like to do is we we always start in our thought processes with the customer. So we would start with your customer, and we'd say, "What's the best way to service your customer?" Right. Okay, and we would say, "Well, your customers are here, here, and here, so you want them to feel comfortable. So maybe you should set outposts, virtual office outposts." near your customers um, that are also in proximity to your team or the team members that interface directly with the customer. Um, That's easy to do. Sure. Using our own company, uh, I got 10 or 15 facilities in and right right around Philly. So that's easy to do in your particular case. Um, Then we would say, well, what, what do you do? What do you use Zoom for? What do you use Teams for? Whatever technology you're using, and how do you do your creative side of the work? Right. And so you would look at that and say, you know, we really do need to rub elbows and shoulders occasionally. Right. So how are we going to do that? Well, once a week, once every other week, we're going to bring the whole team together for X or Y. You know, you, 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 people need to know and trust, trust who they're working with. And I love Zoom. We, we put our first video conferencing system to into our first buildings that we were building for this purpose in 1982. 
Hmm. So we we've been <laughs> zoomed every imaginable way possible, you know, for close to forty years now. Right. So, uh, so this is nothing. Right. Is new. None of this is new, and because we're global, um, uh, we've been global for thirty years. So we, we're great practitioners of the use of technology, but we still, even with all of our facilities, our centers, we still used to get everybody from all of our service providers together even. Um, and, and we used to say, you know, you don't know the customer well unless you know the name of their dog. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's very much the, the same unless your people know who they're, your coworkers' kids are and how they're doing in college and, and the name of their dog. Unless you have some of that going on, they don't trust each other. To your point, what we're missing is collaboration and innovation. We are not, um, you know, we're not sitting amongst each other and, and two people saying like, oh, I'm having a problem with this project or this client and somebody else saying like, oh, yeah, well, I had that same problem with uh, you know, another client six months ago. You guys should try this. You know, I mean, like we're we're missing out on all of that. And you know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking to myself, you know, man, I should like you know get a virtual office or like and, and just require everybody to say like, listen, twice a month, you know, the second and last Wednesday of every month, everybody is going to work from that office together. We're all going to just be there together around the same you know long conference table, and just we're going to do the same thing that you're doing at home, but I'm going to ask you to come in, and we're just going to hang out and do it all together. I can't see how that can not have a beneficial impact on my business. Does that right? I, I would assume you would agree. It, it does, because um, you're, you're talking you're, right now. We're talking about culture, uh, yeah, uh, and and comfort and trust. The things that are necessary for people to work in a stressful environment at times for a specific purpose that's common, right. serving serving your customer to the optimum their, of their capabilities. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a, a tough thing to do. Um, right. uh, most companies, uh, honestly, don't even do a very good job of that if they're all together all the time. Right. Uh, um, right. But being remote is not negative. Being re- distant emotionally, culturally, uh, intellectually is negative. Okay. Um, I have more questions for you. So um, we joked around before uh, we actually started recording, you know, this, uh, you know, this session. And we have, uh, you, know, you know, you and I were saying, like, we both read the same article. There was somebody out there that wrote about how, like, uh, the whole downfall of Silicon Valley Bank was because of uh, the remote workers, you know, <laughs> which, which had absolutely nothing to do with their cash management or, you know, whether or not you invest in T-bills in an increasing interest rate environment. But putting that aside, it was the remote workers that brought them down. Um, so first of all, I'm sure you've got some thoughts on that. <laughs> well, more importantly, as a second part to that conversation, you know, to, to that answer is um, there are a lot of companies out there that you know, they want to reduce their, you know, their, their footprints, their real estate footprints, they, their offices are too big. Um, and they, they do want to embrace more remote working for their employees. And I'm curious to hear, this is part two of my question, what advice that you have for those companies? What do you see companies do that um, is working for them when they set up a remote office environment for their employees? Well, first, I think, I think too many companies look at it as an either or. Yeah. Oh, you're a remote worker now. Well, what does that mean? Okay. Right. And I think if we were to look historically at all companies, um, all enterprises um, of some period ago, we would have said in order to have a successful company, you need two things. You absolutely have to have two things. You have to have customers. And for growth, you have to have access to capital. Right. If you don't have those two things, you might have a nice lifestyle business, but you're not going anywhere. Right. Today. And it's not just today. I think this is always, but it's 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 forced on us today. You have to have access to capital, customers, and flexibility. Right. Okay. So right. I would say when you talk about remote work, that's a specific thing. Um, the office is here. The employee is there. Bring my fingers together so you can see it. Um, um, you know, uh, that's 
most people's thought about remote work. And that's really what the company needs to do is say, I need to create a flexible workplace program, which is inclusive of in office, at home, near home, remote from office home and near home into a distant place. I need to have a lot of flexibility because I only want to do one thing. I want to win the war for talent Mm -hmm. and the talent that I bring on board have the most tools possible to service my customers and our corporate need. Flexibility, flexible workplace uh, is much more important. Remote is just a singular part of it. It, It's one of the tools in the box. And all these CEOs say, oh, we got to bring people back to the office. Oh, we got to send them 100% remote. The old thing, you know, as they say, if the only tool you have in your box is a hammer, you're going to treat every problem like a nail. (laughs) And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, And and it's very small-minded thinking, uh, uh, in my view. Um, You know, it's funny. I was... uh I was just actually speaking to a group of uh, these are uh, independent bankers that were in Louisiana. And uh, actually this wasn't just, this was like, think about it. It was about six months ago. And uh, uh, it was, it was right in the midst of where people were thinking about bringing people back to the office and not bringing people back to the office. And uh, yeah, there, there were a few people in the room, Frank, that were like, you know, everybody's got to come back to the office. That's our culture. That's just the way it's got to be, you know? And, you know, and I remember thinking like, these guys are going to like, they're going to miss out on talent. I mean, you can't, you know, to recruit people nowadays, I mean, half of the workforce are millennials and Gen Zers. Getting back to what you said earlier, I mean, there, there's health insurance, there's retirement benefits and flexibility. I mean, there's like the three hot things you've got to offer to all employees, mm-hmm. right? Well, yeah. And, and I, I think more important than that is, uh, you have to pay them with a certain amount of social capital, not just right. economic capital. Um, right. uh, uh, people want to grow as individuals. And you don't grow as individuals by saying, well, you're a remote worker, you can be here. You have, it has, you have to have a, a structure that's inclusive. And, 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 and I'll come back to the winning the war for talent and cost is, is right. an issue there as well. We made the decision back in the 90s um, that we would hire the best people we could find for the project purpose, regardless of where they were. We didn't care where they were. Um, uh, so uh, we had people in, based in Europe, based in the UK, scattered all over the US, based in Latin America and the Middle East. Um, we found the best person for something. And then we thought to ourselves, we can move everybody to our corporate headquarters, which is in Las Vegas. Uh, we can move everybody to our corporate headquarters in Las Vegas. So, you know, that chief marketing officer and happens to like horse ranches and he happens to live in Kentucky. What's it going to cost me to move him and his family yeah. to Las Vegas? A lot. And how happy he's going to be. He's got his, all of his family and his parents are aging. Right. Uh, he's probably not going to take the job. If he does, how happy is he going to be? Right. Okay. So we came up with the, the, I won't say the theory, but with the decision to not disrupt people's lives and that work, intellect, technology doesn't have borders. And so wherever the best person is in the world for a particular responsibility that we have, we're more than happy to hire them. Okay. Now, oh, what's your culture? Well, our culture is to have the best. Right. Okay. Our culture, because we have the best, has been successful. Um, But we do bring people together several times a year from all over the world because we say, well, what would it have cost us to move everybody to Vegas versus what does it cost us to meet somewhere as an executive team, as a management team, as different parts of teams in our company? Um, to meet somewhere for two or three or four days. Right. Nothing. It's no cost at all. And everybody looks at it as a, they get a break. There's a little bit of a party atmosphere and we all get together. Everybody's excited instead of, well, we're going to the office. You know, it's a big deal. So you have to manage differently 
Right. And change is difficult, particularly for big companies or for people that were brought up a certain way. Okay. You know, I'm not a young guy. You know, I'm in my mid seventies. Um, so, uh, you know, I've seen every iteration of most people have seen in business structures. So the, my career has been over 50 years now. Mm-hmm. So um, when I look at it, you know, change is, is hard, but it's also good it, and, and it's inevitable. Right. Uh, when you fight change, you've, you've, you've said, I, you started to say, I've given up. Right. Um, so Jamie Dimon, you've given up, baby. <laughs> Um, Frank, we only have a few minutes left, but I, um, you know, you bring up the point. I mean, you, you said you're in your seventies. You've been you've been running this business now for a hundred years. Um, <laughs> two hundred, I think. Two hundred. Uh, you know, you started this business up virtual offices in the time of dial up. But you are, um, you know, you you've done great and you've learned a lot. And I have to ask, like, um, some of the lessons that you've learned. Like, you know, if you were going to use your facilities, if you were going to hire a remote executive and you were going to, and they were not in Vegas, but they were in Philly and they, you were going to set them up, you know, and say, this is, we have a remote office there. We have a virtual office that uh, you're going to be going to what for companies looking to do that. What kind of practices have you seen that work the best for them? You know, like, do they make them go in every day? Is there a certain type of technologies they should be having? Is there a certain expectation of them? How, how have you just seen good companies manage these remote employees um, that you know, some advice that you can share with, with the rest of us? Um, first line input from the employee themselves. Okay. What, what do they need? Be, you know, it, it, it's sort of like <laughs> what you're asking uh, a little bit is you, you're saying, well, um, as a marriage counselor, what would you advise people that are having problems with their marriage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would Which say, is a, it depends, right? <laughs> yeah, well I, would, well, I would say very simply, um, did you really get to know each other before you got married? Right, right. If you did, you're probably going to have a better shot at it. Right. So I would say really make sure when you're putting the, a program together or hiring someone that you're all on the same page for the same reasons with the same values. And that would be part of a successful marriage, too. Your are uh, 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 overall. Um, and I'll use an example. We, you say, you, uh, if somebody hires a remote executive, we just hired a remote marketing executive. Okay. Um, she's in Kenya. Okay. Okay. That's a long ways from Vegas. It is. Okay. Um, but we have the tools technologically for uh, communications. We have the tools technologically for workflow management. We have the processes of procedures that everybody contributes to. And uh, we don't see that as anything disruptive or hiring someone. Who, and she's the only person in Kenya. She's by herself, but she's part of about a five person team that is very project related. And she has a particular skill set that after interviews, which we did extensively, we felt that this young lady was just exceptional. Okay. And we thought, you know what? We don't care where she is. Right. And she doesn't care where we are. Right. She's a career driven individual and, and, and wants to prove her capabilities. And right. so we're, we're doing it. It's not hard. It, it, it's, only, it's only hard when you put, you, when you put roadblocks in front of it. But this woman that's in this woman that's in Kenya, for example. So I'm assuming you've got a location where she is, right? We, so. we have we have the capability for her to work from her home, okay. or from a remote office that is in Kenya. She's in Nairobi. Okay. Um, and would you be? Would you, do you? Are you saying to her like we we want you to be in that remote office no. twice a week? So you're not no. even giving her. It's, no. it's just we're, it, we're giving her the capacity to work from her home. Or that office at I her see. preference, at her need. So let's assume she has two small children. Let's assume that she needs to get have some quiet time away from the house. She happens to this, and this is important with work too, remote work. When you sent someone home for the pandemic, and <clears throat> they had a family of four, they lived in a small apartment in Long Island. Right. There was no place for remote work to occur. Right. One or two people sat at the kitchen table and tried to work. That does not 
that doesn't work well. Right. Okay. So you have to make sure when you send someone to remote work, you're just saying you don't have to physically be here, but you still have to have a proper working environment. Right. And that may be, oh, I have a spare bedroom that I'll turn into an office. Okay. That works. Um, uh, but the kids all come home at two o'clock and they all start pulling on dad or mom. Uh, that doesn't work. So you've got to deal with that. Um, uh, you, you, whenever you give someone a remote work from home option, you have to make sure there's also a work near home. Sure. Walk, bike is preferable. Not have to be in the car. That's preferable. Um, sure. Where they can say, hey, think, because a lot of times people's work lifestyle, once they've been remote working for a while, is different. Um, they pop home for lunch or they want to do, they're used to eating home at lunch or the kids come home from school. They take a 15 minute break to deal with the kids and they think things different. Their work productivity is equal or better. We have found it's better when you have this flexibility, but you have to make sure you've given them the tools and don't just say, Oh, work from home. Well, what's their home like? You know, have you given them the right equipment uh, for that? Do you have your corporate system set up to support it? Um, and if you don't do those things, then you're pushing a burden onto your team, which culturally and productivity wise is not going to benefit you. So be prepared you know, do a, do a good job. <laughs> and people are sloppy about this right now. Frank Cottle is the CEO at Alliance Virtual Offices. Frank, how many locations again? And what is your website? We have about 1,500 locations right now. Um, um, we're servicing over 150, almost 160,000 customers uh, across 54 countries. And uh, our website is alliancevirtualoffices.com. Uh, our website is our name, uh, so it's very simple. Uh, and uh, we've been at this for decades and decades. So before remote work was remote work, you know, we were working remotely. It, it makes me laugh because I, I got to imagine never in your life did you expect, you know, this to happen. I mean, you are in the right place at the right time for this business, um, which is, uh, you know, you it's a great opportunity for you, I'm sure. Well, it, it, it has been, but you know what they say, every overnight success takes 20 or 30 years. Yeah, perfect um, example and, of this. And so right place at right time um, is because we stuck to it. Yeah, we good for you. In, in the vision of what we were doing and we understood the dynamics and we just built built the foundation one brick at a time. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. And everybody, you have been watching and listening to the Hartford Small Biz Ahead podcast. My name is Gene Marks. If you need any tips or advice or help in running your business, please visit us at smallbizahead.com or sba.thehartford.com. Again, thanks for watching and or listening. We will see you again with another episode very soon. Take care. Take care.